Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig here. It is nine o'clock on a Thursday, which means it's time for... Did we decide what we're calling this? I don't think so yet. Don't know. It's called the creative process. Last the creative week. process. Yeah. yeah. That's quite nice. I like that. So, welcome back to another creative process. We did the first one last Thursday, and uh, the idea is very simple. I've got two bowls. The first bowl has a bunch of different effects whole bunch of different effects that you could achieve in magic, and they're all completely random, suggested by you guys at home. Uh, Michael wrote them all out. The second bowl has um, uh, all different props that we could use, and there's a ton of different props in there, um, loads of different stuff, some things that magicians are commonly using, other things that are just completely and totally random, like nuts and bolts. And, uh, and the idea is that I pull two out of this bowl, I pull one out of this bowl, and so I've got two props, I've got one effect, and I have to, in real time, create a trick using those items and using that, uh, that, that effect. Now, I can't guarantee how good the trick is going to be, um, but I think that this is, like, this is gonna become my favorite uh, thing that I do on Magic TV, because one of the questions that we get over and over again is about creativity. How do you create? What's the creative process? So if I actually do this and I, I, I literally share with you my monologue and what I'm going through as I'm kind of piecing this together, then hopefully it'll inspire people to create, uh, more people to create. And last week I thought went quite well. The comments were fantastic and uh, everyone seemed to like it. We ended up with a superpower and nuts and bolts and a metal tin. And I think we came up with some really good ideas, didn't we, Michael? Yeah, I, mean, that, really yeah I thought that was really good. Um, this could be a shit show, to be perfectly honest. I've got no idea, but we'll uh, we'll give it a go. Um, but but before I start, remember, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, and if you want us to carry on doing this, you know, the whole point of Magic TV is we put content on here that you guys want to see. So as long as you want to keep seeing it, we'll carry on doing it. But yeah. I'm going to go for this, and we're going to see how things go. So, first of all, we are going to go for the prop, and I have here a banana. Great start. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Okay, so I've got a banana, uh, and I have... There we go. Uh, okay, slightly more normal. A pack of cards. Okay. Pack of cards and a banana. If this thing I'm pulling out says impossible location, I've already got a trick. <laughs> Card and banana. Right, okay. So, um, we have... Prediction. So... got to do a prediction with a car, pack of cards and a banana. Just so people understand the rules here, I am allowed to do other stuff. It's not like I'm just stuck with a pack of cards and a banana. I am allowed to have other props. So, for example, if a thumb tip could help me, and I have no fucking clue how a thumb tip would help me in this one. <laughs> but if a thumb tip could help me, I'm allowed to have other stuff to go along this, but I have to include a pack of cards, I have to include a banana, and it has to be a prediction. So, first of all, I need to go and get a pack of cards. Did did, uh, did Jack bring his lunch in? He normally just brings bananas. He's on the health kick at the moment. He only ever eats bananas. Uh, has he brought bananas in? I think he had pancakes, but Kay has a banana. Kay has a banana? Kay has a banana. Right, okay. We're going to stop this for a minute. I'm just going to go and get a banana and a pack of cards. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I'm back. Um, and I have a pack of cards. <laughs> I have a banana and I have a prediction. So I'm going to go through my creative process here and what I'm thinking and what I'm thinking is what the fuck. Um, so the first thing that I'm thinking, whenever I start working with something like this, where I've got like weird props and things in front of me, the first thing I try to think through is have I ever seen anything like this prop being used in a trick before? So have I seen a banana being used in a trick? And I know I joked around earlier on, I have seen like build a banana, where there's a slit in the back of the banana and you shove a borrowed bill in there. That's obviously not going to help us. Obviously, Piff the Magic Dragon was famous for having a banana in his act, but he literally, all he did with it was eat it. Um, uh, it's very funny the way he eats it, but he literally just eats it, so that's probably not going to help us. Um, have you ever seen, actually, there is that, that really old bit 
Have you ever seen, I, I don't know what it's called, the first person I saw talk about it was, um, I think it was Paul Daniels in a really old book called Adult Magic. Don't know if anybody remembers Adult Magic. Um, but I, I think it predates Paul. Uh, I think he called it Karate Banana. Have you ever seen that? <laughs> this is kind of a really interesting thing. I did this quite a lot. This is actually a really cool thing. If you get a needle, like a really sharp needle, what you can do is you can stab the needle into the banana and you can actually cut the banana into uh, like slices. You can actually cut the banana inside the skin. So you get a needle, you put the needle inside the banana and you kind of go back and forth like that. So you're cutting the banana into lots of different pieces. Um, so the first thought is, and this is terrible, but I'm just going down. <laughs> the first thought is you do that. So you cut it into like seven pieces inside the skin. And then you have a pack of cards shuffled. So the cards are shuffled and these are actually, uh, this is actually a special deck of cards. So that's not <laughs> going to work. Um, <laughs> that's actually, uh, doesn't matter. Do. What, have we got, what have we got here? Uh, this is a quantum deck. Oh. Right, let's try again. Did that, th there's some cards there. Just grab me that circuit deck, that top one. There you go, right. <laughs> yeah, 1914 special. This is the problem with this office. You have the, like how many packs of cards are in this are in this room here? Like there's it's probably to be a few hundred. At yeah, there's point. a few hundred. How many of them do you reckon are real? <laughs> Not many. <laughs> <laughs> Even this isn't real. This is a marked deck, but you know whatever. Let's go for it. So you 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 take this and have it shuffled, and you bring out the banana. Maybe you could predict the banana ahead of time. No, that's not going to be very good. How would you get somebody? If you had, <laughs> Michael, name a yellow fruit. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe use digital force bag or something. So, we, we, you know, somehow somebody's shuffling the cards and you've got this in a bag or something. So this is in a bag and somebody's shuffling a pack of cards and you have somebody do digital force bag and you go, look, I've got a bunch of fruits. It's hundred different fruits on your phone. Pick one at random, banana. Uh, okay, fantastic. And you reach into the bag and you pull out a banana and you go, oh my God, that's amazing. There's your prediction. And then you say, well, let's see if we can go one step further. And you get somebody to be a fruit ninja. You say, have you ever seen that game Fruit Ninja? We're going to try and do the same sort of thing. <laughs> And you take the cards back, and as you take the cards back, you spread through, and you go, these are well shuffled, and you get the seven to the top. And you say, look, I tell you what, I want you to cut the cards, so they cut, and you're going to mark the cards. And you say, what I want you to do is I want you to chop the, uh, just like Fruit Ninja, I want you to chop at the, uh, at the banana and see, see how it goes. So they chop in midair, and they, uh, they get this banana, and it's chopped, and then you open it up, and it falls into seven pieces and you go oh my god you chopped it into seven pieces but look at this when you cut the deck you cut to seven i knew that you'd chop it into seven pieces because you cut to a seven so it's kind of two predictions there's a couple of problems with it the first problem is it's a bit shit uh, <laughs> and the second problem is i mean it's a bit generic isn't it it's like you know, you've got a prediction effect. You've got a banana. It's like, right, okay, let's use digital force back. I think we need to be a little bit more creative than that. 90% of prediction effects could be done by just thinking of digital force back. But it is an interesting concept of, of, of having the, um, the banana chopped into pieces. And I do like the idea of the prediction being the banana, but I don't think that can be the banana. Because a banana is such a weird thing to bring out, isn't it? Look, you just picked a, a banana. But I think that there could be more to it than this. So that's the first thing that I've got. And it doesn't, that, the problem with that is the playing cards were kind of arbitrary. They weren't really being used in the effect. Um, they were kind of being used, but not really. Um, so that's not going to work. Right, okay. Uh, I'm still stuck on that whole banana thing in terms of chopping it up into pieces inside, because I think that's quite a cool visual. Um, I don't know. How about... I'm thinking, could you combine it with an any card at any number? 
<laughs> any banana at any number. <laughs> you combine it with any card at any number. Would that just be dumb? Um, how do you get somebody to freely choose a banana without using digital force bag? Without saying pick a yellow fruit? You could have a whole bunch of fruit and you could use a patio force or equivoke or quinter or something like that. Like, hey, look, I've got five different items of fruit. Name a number. You picked a banana. Pick and a then this deck of cards. Okay, this is, I don't know if this is any good. But you've got this deck of cards, right? But the faces, have you ever seen Spread Wave by Matthew Beach? It's a really cool effect. But basically, the entire when you spread the deck out, there's a word that appears. And it's a, uh, it's kind of a, um, a word. Um, what you could do is you could create your own spread wave deck. You could have a blank deck of cards. So the deck of cards is blank, but you write banana along it like that. So the word banana is written along the spread. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you spread it, you're going to see the word banana. But you start off with a cover card on the face of the deck. So there's a cover card on the face of the deck. So it looks like a regular deck of cards. And you bring out a bowl of fruit. So you've got a bowl of fruit and you've got a deck of cards, but you don't even reference the bowl of fruit. You just got, you got fruit there. You're performing at home. You have fruit, you got fruit, okay? And there's all sorts of fruit in there. There's everything. And you've got a deck of cards. You bring the deck of cards out and obviously they're gonna see this card on the face and they're gonna assume it's just a regular deck of cards. Uh, you can spread it out face down, so that's not a problem. You could even give the cards a bit of a uh, full shuffle. Give them a couple of full shuffles because you want those uh, marks to stay in order. So you give the cards a couple of full shuffles like that, maybe a false cut. So the cards are staying in order. And then you say, let's try something. I'm going to show you the difference between magic and making a prediction. But first of all, magic. And now you take the deck and you say, look, I've got this deck of cards. Oh, now you force the bottom card. Now you force the bottom card. So <clears throat> you're shuffling the card face down. So you flash the bottom card, but they, uh, but you know, you've then given the deck a full shuffle. So, uh, you know, and a false cut. And then you force the bottom card. So you could just use a, uh, for, you know, for quickness now, we'll just use a riffle force. So they say stop and you show them this card and you take it out. So that goes by doing a double undercut, that's going to put the deck back into position. And then you show their card and you put it into the middle of the deck, right? Like that. And now, so that card's a blank card there. So now you say, look, I'm going to show you magic. If I just snap my fingers and wave my hand over check this out now every single card has turned blank with one card that's printed which is the ten of clubs but they don't see banana because the thing with this deck because if you write banana this way you write banana this way it'll show up that way but it won't show up that way that way it's going to look completely blank yeah so so you could you could literally spread them like this and they look like blank cards that's it you've got banana written on the back of this card as well okay so you've got banana written on the back of the 10 so you bring all of these cards out that's it you've got your bowl of fruit so the bowl of fruit's there forget about the fruit for a minute the fruit's there you've got a deck of cards and you say hey i'm going to show you a card trick thanks for coming around my house you flash the bottom card like this uh just casually you give the deck a few cuts cutty 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 you give them a few more cuts and what you're going to do is you're going to double undercut the bottom two cards to the top because you want to hide the fact that it says banana on the back of the card. So you've got it. So by double undercutting, you're not going to see banana. You're not going to see the blank faces. But now this 10 of clubs is here with banana written on the back of it. But you've got this cover card here so they can't see. <clears throat> Even better. Right. No. Ignore me. Right. Hang on. Reverse. OK. So this is blank. Boom, ba boom, ba boom, boom, boom. This is blank. Banana written on it, spread wave style, but the other side is blank, right? So this is blank. You have a double uh, double backer here. So this is a double backer, right? This is a double backer. This is the 10 with banana written on it. You with me? Yeah. So you bring these out, 
flash the deck, give the cards false cuts, false shuffles, do whatever you want to do, mix them up, let them think it's completely mixed. And you say, hey, I'm going to get you to pick a card. I'm going to show you the difference between magic and a prediction, but I, I don't want to see the card. So uh, it's very important that uh, I don't see. And as you're saying that, you're doing your double undercut. What the fuck is going on here? That's the, uh, that's the double backer. That's why it's that way around. That's the double backer, right? So this is the double backer, and then you've got the 10 there. So now you riffle down the deck, do the riffle force, have them say stop. Where you say stop, you say, I'm allowed to look at your card. So now you're gonna do a double turnover and I'm gonna push that card off there. This is a double backer. So because of the double turnover, because that card's there, they think they're seeing the back of their card. Does that make sense? Yeah. They're not, you're hiding the word banana because this is a double backer. Does that make sense? Yeah. Imagine that king is a back. You would literally just have it like this. So they're seeing a back right now. You just turn it over and you deal that onto the table. They're still seeing a back, right? So now you are going to put the card in the middle of the deck. You're going to put the card in the middle of the deck. But you don't want to hide. You want to hide the word banana and you also want to hide that the cards are blank. This is quite tricky. I suppose if I brought my hand up like that, you can't tell it's blank, can you? No. Yeah, my hand's covering it from the bottom. So I could just come up and say, look, I'm going to put your card about halfway down. They've already seen that the cards have faces, so that looks yeah. okay, yeah? Now, you got, I want to get rid of this double backer ideally. So what I could do is I could say, oh, I'm not going to need the card case. I put the card case away, and as I do, I steal the double backer. So the double backer's gone now. So now I say, look, let me show you what real magic looks like. If I just do this and I snap my fingers, every card turns blank in the deck, except for one card right there in the middle is the Ten of Clubs. That's quite a good trick. That could even be signed. Yeah. If you wanted it to, that could even be signed. Now you leave the cards there, so you've got this obvious impression of all of the cards blank. And you go, well, that was magic. Let me show you what making a prediction would look like. But I'll make a magical prediction. And now you go over to your bowl of fruit and you take out all your fruit. Look, I've got a banana, I've got an orange, I've got an apple, I've got grapes, I've got this, I've got that, I've got the other. You bring out all your fruits and either using patio or, or quinta or, or equivoque or something, you force the banana. And you say, look, remember this signed card? I really did know you'd pick banana because what's happened is it's now got the word banana written on the back of the Ten of Clubs. And, uh, and they think that's the end of the trick. And you go, of course, the weird thing is, and you, you square up the deck and you put it over there and you turn it round. And you say, the weird thing is if I take your 10 of clubs and I touch it to the deck. Now, on these blank cards, it says banana. That's okay. Yeah. That's not bad. I quite like that, but there's a problem with it. I don't, I don't really think it's a prediction. A prediction is something that you make ahead of time. Yeah. It, it, it's a prediction is, I'm kind of bastardizing magic and mentalism here to make it fit <laughs> the theme. But it, it's, it's, it's not really, you wouldn't really think of that as a prediction, would you? That's like more of a... Yeah, no in particular. It's, it's, like, it's like a prediction doesn't magically appear on the back of a playing card that they've just signed. A prediction doesn't magically appear on a blank deck. It's, it's good. I quite like that as a, as a, as a concept. And also, it is the lazy way of doing a prediction. I talked about digital force bag uh, to, to, you know, uh, to force the, uh, the banana being a bit of a lazy way. Using any sort of force like that is just as lazy um, because that's the thing that would first instantly come to mind. You know, prediction with a banana, set it up and on the table and do, you know, do, do equivoke. Bottle of Pepsi in a prediction have a load of drinks out and you, you know what I mean it's but what I like about that is it does use the deck more because the other one the first one didn't use the yeah. deck at all did it um ultimately realistically I know we talked about cutting it up and and that that's more of a, a magic trick as well you know I know you're predicting how many pieces it goes into but that's really a magic trick I think if you're going to do a prediction I think if you're doing a prediction, you have to predict the banana. 
Yeah. I think that the banana, the only real use for that, unless you're going down the route of this is a mind reading banana. <laughs> this banana, this banana has been embowed with psychic powers. Seriously, honestly, you know, force a card, five of uh, five diamonds. Say, say stop for me, Michael. Stop. There you go, have a look at that card. You got it? Yeah. On, let me listen to my <laughs> banana. Banana says it's the five of diamonds. Reminds me of that old Sesame Street um, sketch. Did you see the old sketch about Bert and Ernie? Did you ever see that? Um, but is it Ernie or Bert? One of them has a banana in his ear. And Bert comes over, or Ernie comes over, I can't remember. One of them comes over and goes, you got a banana in your ear? And he goes, what? You got a banana in your ear? What? You got a banana in your ear? Can't hear you, I've got a banana in my ear. And, and, and then later on the sketch continues and he goes, you got a banana in your ear again, why? He's like, oh yeah, I've got a banana in my ear. Why have you got a banana in your ear? Oh, it's to it's to keep away the muggers or something, or it's to keep away the ghosts. And he's like, there's no ghosts on... Oh, bears, that's it, I think. To keep away the bears. There's no bears on Sesame Street. Yeah, it's working, isn't it? Like, it, I, you know, that was an interesting use of banana, but again, I don't know why I brought that up, because it's got nothing to do with magic. <laughs> it's just, you know. Um, okay, so playing cards and bananas. Predicting a banana. What about if we could predict a banana and predict a playing card? Or what if the banana predicted the playing card. That would be good. We predict a banana and then banana picks the playing card. But again, we come back how to force it. The rules of this are that I am allowed to use other stuff, aren't I? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I, go, I went away and I'm back. I bought a few things with me. I bought a couple of envelope, uh, bags I stole from Ryan and stuff, and a Svengali deck. I think I can use the Svengali deck, can't I? Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, I know it says yeah. a pack of cards, but, I mean, it doesn't specifically say what sort. Yeah. And I'm allowed to use gimmicks, so we're going to get rid of circuit deck, by circuit deck. We're going to use a uh, Svengali deck, purely because the Svengali deck is the best deck of cards ever for forcing items. And what I'm thinking is this would be a really easy way to force a queen of clubs. Now there's a concept that I published on the Netrix. I don't know if you remember it, Michael, where you're writing stuff on the backs of cards. I think this might work here. So what I'm going to do I'm going to move this close-up pad for a minute. I've brought some Sharpies with me. I'm going to write lots of different fruits on the backs of all these Force cards. So on the back of all of these Queen of Clubs, I'm going to write different fruit. Okay. And um, on these cards, I'm going to write banana. I know you don't know where I'm going with this. Just bear with me for a minute, because I think this this might be able to use the deck of cards to force everything. This might not work, uh, but I'm gonna write banana on the back of all the non-force cards. So the force fruits, I'm gonna write on the back of the non-force cards. And then on the back of the force cards, I'm gonna write random fruit. This could okay. take a while. So hopefully, Michael will be able to forward this. <laughs> and you'll see a fast forward thing of me writing on the backs of cards. Right, this could go terribly wrong, but let me just update you with what I've, uh, my thought process. So my thought process, because that's what the point of this bloody thing. What I was thinking is, uh, the reason I wanted to bring a Svengali deck into this is because the Svengali deck is a deck of cards, but it actually allows you to force a card in a very, very clean way. But because you've got 26 force cards, obviously you've got all of the, the Queen of Clubs. But... You can actually use the back of a Svengali deck to write items on, and you can also use that um, to force uh, an item off the back of a, a Svengali deck, which is something I did with movies many, many years ago. So what I've got here is I have, on all of the Queen of Clubs, which are the force cards in this particular Svengali deck, we put different fruit. Me and Michael went through, well, Michael went through and found... There's some random fruit out there, I've got to tell you. <laughs> There's some random fruit, but we got, we got them. And then on the back of all of these regular cards, I've got bananas. I'll put the foresight of banana on the back of every single one of those. Now, if this works, I'm going to alternate the 
force cards with the non-force cards just like you would in a normal Svengali deck. Avocado. Right, okay, so yes, so what we have now is in essence we have 26 um, force cards. We got a Svengali deck set up, right? Um, and, and one of the things what you, that you should do when you're creating magic is think about stuff that you've done before. So I've spent a long time creating magic and thinking about magic. Um, so I know that a Svengali deck can be used to force another item because I've done it before. Um, and, and, and half of the thing is going, right, okay, this worked in this context. If I'm forced to use a banana, then it might work in this context. Now we can flesh the routine out as we go. But let me explain the general concept here. The general concept is because these are, this is a Svengali deck, what I can do is I can, um, I can, I can shuffle these. Now, because they're long and short, it's going to keep the pairs together. So I can give these cards a waterfall shuffle and it's going to keep the pairs together. Um, but obviously, if I want to, I can, I can show that all of the cards are different because of the Svengali um, uh, principle now i would never display them like this because that kind of gives away that you're using a svengali deck but you could do is the point you're trying to make here but i think that you wouldn't like focus on that uh because you can show that the cards are different in the context of doing a shuffle people can see that the cards are different but the backs of the cards if you dribble down here because of the long and short they're going to see different fruit on every single card they're not going to see banana banana's not going to show up at all, which is quite cool, yeah. really, when you think about it. Uh, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna uh, show up. Also, you can spread them out this way because you know that a banana is every other card. So as long as you push off in pairs, because I've written it in the middle, uh, they're not actually seeing what the fruit is. So I can spread through in pairs, and I can show different fruits as I'm going through. So I can say, look, we've got blueberries. Uh, we've got coconuts, we've got pears. The point is we've got loads of different fruit. And they're not going to see bananas because I'm pushing them off in pairs. Which means that I could... Right, so this is my first concept on this. Use this as a fancy force. So the reason I bought a bag is... Can you pass one of those pens there, Michael? The reason I bought a bag is... If I do a really fancy... <laughs> Shut up. This is the universal sign for shitty prediction. <laughs> there we go, whatever. Good enough. So, um, put a banana in there. That's my prediction. Come on. Bear with me. Banana doesn't like being in the bag. I, I apparently am no good at bags. Shut <laughs> up. Okay, I'm just I just suck at bags. All right, okay, there we go. There's my prediction. Perfect. So, I bring my prediction out, and I say there's a prediction in there. And uh, you tell a story, hey, me and my family, we love fruit. We eat fruit all the time, and we buy in all the fruit. We go to all the fruit. We go to the supermarket, and all we do is we just get fruit. That's it. <laughs> Can't you look at me? See, look, I, all I eat is fruit. Shut up. Um... And, and we always struggle to decide what fruit to eat, which is why we've got this pack of cards. We bought a deck of cards, we got a deck of cards at home and uh, the cards are normal. I mean, you can shuffle them up. It's a regular deck of cards. But what's interesting is we wrote fruit on the back of every single card. So every single card all the way through has got fruit. Now, some of the fruit is my favorite. Some of the fruit is Ryland's favorite. Some of the fruit is, is Sarah's favorite, but all the way through, we've got all of this different uh, fruit. And, uh, and the idea is, that we would, um, we would, uh, um, you know, we, we, one of us would pick a card and we'd decide which fruit we were having, like in this case, tangerine. 
um, my family don't like doing this with me because obviously because I'm a magician, uh, I can predict what fruit we're going to have, uh, which sounds ridiculous, but I'm actually going to show you. So that would be the hook. You'd then have the card shuffled so they see the faces of all of the cards. Everything looks copacetic. They see the faces of all of the cards. And then you'd literally just have them say, so you could say, what's nice about this is you can have them say stop. So you can say, look, Michael, I'm going to go through the cards like this. You're going to say stop. Wherever you say stop, we'll look at this card. So we'll, we'll take the card that's on the face, not the card there. So it wouldn't be coconut, it's whatever's on this one. So if you said stop there, you'd have that card, not one there that says pineapple. Now, what's nice about this is I'm showing the faces and the backs of all of the cards and it looks like there's no bananas in face and they're seeing all of the cards are different, um, which is quite cool. So you would then say stop. So say stop, Michael. Stop. There, so 10 of diamonds. Are you happy with that one? Yeah. Okay, so you then put that to the face and you could deal that there. And you'd say, let's see what we've got on the face. We've got a banana. And I open up the prediction I showed to banana. That's good. Do you like that? Yeah. You know what the problem is? There's a problem. The problem is twofold. It's not really using the pack of cards. It is, but it's only using the pack of cards. I mean, I wrote them on the back of the pack of cards arbitrarily. I haven't really incorporated the cards in anything. It could be anything. And also, why am I using a Svengali deck? Because the Svengali deck has 26 force cards, but I'm not using any of the force cards. Do you know what the problem is? And also, it's kind of over a little bit quickly. It's like, you've picked fruit, <laughs> banana. It's banana. Woo! One to your coin trick. So <laughs> it's it's kind of like we need we need a little bit more to it. We need um What about if we had two people pick cards? What about if we had two people pick cards? How would that work? So, um, right, okay, so we shuffle, blah, we don't do that because that would expose the thing, we don't do that at all. What about if we shuffle the cards, yeah, and we have them cut the cards wherever they want to and complete the cut? And wherever they cut, you deal that card down onto the table. And you wrist kill so they don't see banana. Like that. So they're going to get a queen of clubs, aren't they? Yeah. Um, oh, no, that's not going to work because we want... That would have to be afterwards. Um, they cut wherever they want to. No, no, no. Cut this way. No, they're going to get... Uh, we want them to get a queen of clubs. But that could be the second card. The first card would have to be this one. Okay. Okay. So you bring out the deck of cards. You point out that they're all different, yeah? And you have them say stop. So they say stop. And you say, we're going to take the one that you stopped at. So then you turn it face up. And you're going to deal that down onto the table. You say, uh, we're going to use the jack of hearts. Okay. And uh, that's the card that you've picked. But, and, and I did a wrist kill because I don't want them to see the queen, but the deck of hearts is what they're gonna pick. And then I have them uh, pick a fruit. So they pick lime, so you have them say stop again, but face down, and wherever they stop, you, you, oh, I got, I got, uh, you're gonna do a Chris Dannem and alignment move, uh, like that, keep a break, so you put that down there. So you've got orange and you've got jack of hearts. Actually, you wouldn't need the break. You just need to remember that you'd need to reset. You'd need to put the queen there. So the queen would go back there. And that would be back there. But if I did that... Sorry, I'm, I'm talking to myself, aren't I? I'm, I'm aware of this. So you... Um... Okay, I've got it. Right, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. So you have the card shuffled. And you do the whole patter about, about fruit. And look, I've got all these different... Uh, uh, fruit item fruits fruits on the back of all of these cards and you say that you're going to pick one of these completely at random so I'm going to go down 
and you're gonna say stop on any fruit that you like the look of. And when you see a fruit that you like the look of, you're gonna say stop, and we're gonna deal it down onto a table. So they say stop anytime they want to, and in this said papaya. So you deal it down onto a table, you say papaya, so that's your choice, perfect. And I've risk killed so they don't see banana. And uh, now of course you can't do it face up like that, can you? No. Um, so that wouldn't work. Okay, so you'd have to take the one off the face first, like we did before. So they would say stop first of all for the card. So would you like an ace? Would you like a, where would you like? The jack of hearts, okay. We're going to deal that there and you do the risk kill you got the jack of hearts so that's your card we also need a fruit so as i go through just say stop anytime you want to stop kumquat are you sure you want kumquat yes do your uh, alignment move put the rest of the cards away and you say here i predicted you you could have picked any card uh, any fruit you predicted kumquat and i predicted a banana and then you say Damn it. But there is a fruit on the back of this card as well. And the fruit on the back of this card is banana. That's quite good, isn't it? Yeah. But why is this card? Yeah, there needs to be a reveal of predicting what that card is. Which we can do because it's a it's false, a false card. card. <laughs> By the way, you can write on a banana with a Sharpie. I didn't know that until now. <laughs> I like this. I really like this because that's fucking random. <laughs> <laughs> that's so random. I love that. There's something I really love about that because no one's going to think, oh, he's predicted the card on the banana. So imagine that. So, you know, you've got... Um, you've got that in there and you've got right okay so we we're at this point weren't we and you go so okay you could have picked any fruit you picked kumquat you could have picked any card it's the jack of hearts forget about the card it's about the fruit what if i told you you'd pick kumquat would that be good because inside my bag i actually have a banana thank you very much okay kumquat um you know in some um in in, in some countries they do call a banana or come I don't know if you know okay you don't look very happy but you did pick this card uh and I didn't show you the back of this card and believe it or not you could have picked any card you picked this card and you picked the card with banana on the back of it how awesome is that I know what you're thinking though you're thinking what about this card well well you could have picked any card you picked come it's got the queen of clubs on the back of it I knew you'd pick the queen of clubs and you've got a card in here because I didn't show you, you put the banana down, I didn't show you, there's actually a playing card in here as well. And we got a face down blank card and the card set, you take the card out and you say, uh, if, this had your, if this had your card on it, would that be good? And they go, yeah, and you turn it around and it says your card, but then underneath it says brackets and it goes, is on the banana. And then you go, well, what do you mean it's on the banana? And you go, look at this, you could have picked any card, you put the queen of clubs. <laughs> fucking nailed it mate I like that just because of how random it is it's just bizarre <laughs> isn't it <laughs> I really like that I really really like this should we try it on Jack yeah let's I do th it I think this is, work. Yeah. You know, I think what we need to do you know, I mean the recess isn't too much of a problem you just have to find the bit where two cards meet because obviously there's a force card out of position that would go on the face and that's the reset so it's only a couple of seconds reset um, okay, so I need to get a blank card, a blank face card, and a jack, and we'll give it a go and we'll see how it goes. How's that sound? We'll let's have to it. hide the bananas. We don't want to see the bananas. <laughs> right, okay. Let's, uh, let's go get Jack. Jack's never seen it before. It's the first time, because obviously <laughs> we only came up with it half an hour ago. But lunch. <laughs> it's not my packed lunch. This is a prediction. That's why it's got the universal sign for prediction on the bag which is a question mark. I could have just put the bag there, but I thought by putting a question mark on, I'd make it more obvious that this is a prediction. It's a prediction that's gonna happen in the not too distant future. I'm gonna put it over there. I'm gonna put it over there. Please notice it's out my reach. There you go. Now let's have a deck of cards. 
deck of playing cards. Right. And I need to tell you something about my family. My family love fruit. Do they? Oh, they love it. I've yeah. never once seen Ryland eat fruit. He does. He loves fruit. So does Tia. So does Sarah. They all love the fruit. They, 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 I, I do as well. I love the fruit. We all love the fruit. We have fruit all the time. Right. And, and the problem is, we get so much fruit, we argue at home over which fruit we should eat next. Like, we barely eat anything else other than fruit. It's like breakfast, lunch, dinner. It's like, what are we going to eat now for the fruit? We like to skip the other stuff and go straight for the fruit. But the shopping trips are really interesting for us. We'll go to the shopping market and we'll just literally have a trolley round and we'll just go straight for the fruit section. We'll just go straight. We'll skip all the other stuff. We'll go straight to fruit, fruit. That's all it is, it's fruit. Um, and then we argue about what fruit to have when we get home. So I came up with a solution the other day. Or the other year. Was it to buy less fruit? No, no, you fuck that. Um, what I did is I took a deck of cards, because I'm a magician, it's my want and my desire. And uh, what I did is I wrote on the back of the cards different fruit. Right. So every single card has got a different fruit. This is all the fruit that we like. And some of it's quite normal. Some of it's a little bit eclectic. I know you like fruit as well. Oh, you can see that you like black currants, avocados. You like avocado? Is that a fruit? It's definitely a yeah. fruit. Is Watermelon, it? yeah. Oh. Cranberry, grape. Kumquat? Do you like kumquat? I've never tried it. Haven't you tried kumquat? Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> Nothing like a bit of a kumquat. Um, <laughs> That's so sorry. Um, so we, we, and what we do is one of us will shuffle the cards right. and then we'll randomly pick a piece of fruit and that's the fruit that we'll have for dinner. And we'll just sit round and we'll eat that piece of fruit. Now, the problem is, there's a problem with this system. And the problem with this system is, obviously, being a magician, I can predict the fruit that's going to be picked. And so the rest of the family are really annoyed with me because they know that I know um, what we're going to be having for dinner with the fruit that we get because I can predict it. And uh, I'll show you exactly how I can actually predict fruit. That I can predict anything. I'm like Mr. Predict. Because I'm a mentalist now, Jack, so I can predict anything. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a mentalist now, if you don't know. So I can, I can, I can predict... I can predict absolutely anything. And, and I'll prove it to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these cards, okay? And um, I'm, going to, I'm going to go through and you're going to say stop. Now, wherever you say stop, you're going to pick a playing card. We're going to have two cards picked. We're going to have a card picked and we're going to have another card picked. One face up, one face down. You'll see why later. Okay. We're going to start off with the card face up. Now, it's really important that you feel you have a free choice. Because I don't want you saying later on, that wasn't a prediction, that was a force. Because I'm not going to force something onto you. I'm going to predict a free choice because I'm a mentalist now, Jack. So I'm going to go through like this. You're going to say, stop. I'm going to show you the card. That's the Six of Diamonds. You're going to go, yes, Craig, I love the Six of Diamonds. I want the Six of Diamonds. My entire life, I've been waiting for the Six of Diamonds. We'll use the Six of Diamonds. If, however, you go, no, I'm not feeling the Six of Diamonds, Craig. I'll do it again. I'll carry on. And you'll say, stop. I'll go, Three of Diamonds. How are you feeling about that, Jack? And you'll be like, you know what? I've got a good vibe about the Three of Diamonds. I'll go, great. Do you want the Three of Diamonds? And you'll be like, yeah, I'm going to have the Three of Diamonds. If not, we'll carry on. And we'll, we'll keep doing this over and over again until the ad revenue kicks in on YouTube, right? Okay, so. <laughs> Let's just do this. So anytime you want to, Jack, just say stop. Stop. Right, so we've got a three of clubs, Jack. How are you vibing about the three of clubs? I like the three. Would you like to keep the three? Or would you like to do this again? All good things coming for you, so... So you want the three of clubs? I don't want you saying later on, I made you pick the three of clubs, Jack, because that isn't the case. Are you happy with the three of clubs? I want the three. You want the three, I'm going to put the three there. Now you also have to pick the fruit, because the whole purpose of this is that I'm going to predict the fruit that you're going to pick, right? So we're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to go down, and you're going to say stop wherever you say stop. Dragon fruit. Have you ever tried dragon fruit? I have, actually. Yeah, it's really nice. It's like a fruit, but dragon as well. It's like mixed. It's amazing. So I'm going to go through. You're going to say stop, and wherever you say stop, that's the fruit that we'll use. But again, Jack, if you're not happy with that fruit, if you're not vibing about that fruit, if that fruit doesn't tickle your fancy, then we'll continue until we get a piece of fruit that you like and you alone like, because it's really important that you don't say later on, Craig made me pick my fruit. I didn't, Jack. You can have anyone you want to. Jack, say stop. Stop. We've got a coconut, Jack. Now, you might be thinking, coconut, is that a fruit? It's a nut. It even says nut in the thing. It's cocoa nut. It's not cocoa fruit. Some of them, like passion fruit, it blatantly says there, it's a fruit. It doesn't say coconut fruit. It says cocoa nut. You might be thinking, that's not really a fruit. I'm not going to go for that. And also, I don't like coconut. The only good thing with a coconut is throwing balls at them in a coconut shy or potentially bounties. I don't know. You might love coconut. It's your choice. Let's go again. Okay. Good. Go. I'm going to keep going, Jack, because I think you're right. Stop. Grapefruit. I like grapefruit. Are you sure you like grapefruit? Grapefruit. You can change your mind if you want to. I want grapefruit. You want grapefruit. You definitely want grapefruit. I like grapefruit. Final, final answer? Final answer? Yeah, grapefruit it is. That was a free choice, wasn't it, Jack? Yeah. Forget about the card for now, because that's going to become important later on, because I have got more than one prediction, Jack. In this bag, there are two predictions. 
that the first prediction, the most important prediction, the prediction that matters, is the fruit. I told you I would show you how I can predict the fruit that another person will pick. You had a free choice of fruit. You had grapefruit, Jack. You could have picked anything. You said stop. You had such a free choice, Jack, right? And yet you picked grapefruit. So, Jack, I have in here, you're not going to believe it, I have a banana. Yay. Now, on the surface, you might think that I've screwed up. <laughs> And that would be, that, well, that would be a good assumption, Jack, because obviously this is not a grapefruit. It doesn't look like a grapefruit. It's not round like a grapefruit. It's yellow. It's a banana. Yes. Anyone can see this is a banana. Oh, it's oh, not a grapefruit. Well, why is it a banana? But I did say to you earlier on, I said, Jack, you're going to pick two cards. Yeah. You had a free choice of three of clubs. I even said to you, if you don't vibe the three of clubs, you can go on to a different card. You chose not to go on to a different card. You chose to stay on the three of clubs, which means that on this table, there's two fruits. Is it? Yeah, because there's one on the back of this card. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And on the back of the three of clubs, Jack, there's actually a banana. Hey. Isn't that amazing? That's pretty good. But here's the thing, Jack, because it gets even better. I said there were two predictions in here, and there is. There's another prediction. So grapefruit. Because on the, no, 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 no. Because on the back of this grapefruit card, there's another card, Jack. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that card is the queen of clubs. Your old queen? Jack, I have got one other thing in there. I don't know if everyone can see it. There's a playing card. It's not like it's a deck of playing cards, Jack. There's one card right inside there. Can you see that inside there, Michael? There's yeah. one card. One card and one card only. Jack, we don't need the bag anymore. I'm done. Jack, if this had your card written on it, would that be good? My card written on it? Yeah, if, if this was your card, would that be good? That'd be pretty good. There you go, Jack. It says your card. Look at that, your card. Your card. Your card. But it does say underneath in brackets, what does it say, Jack? Is on the banana. Your card is on the banana. Remember, Jack, you could have picked any card. You picked the Queen of Clubs. First of all, you picked this card with banana on the back of it, and I predicted banana. But this is a unique banana, Jack. This is unlike any other banana in the world. This banana is unique. If you went to a million fruit shops, what do you call the people who sell fruit? Is it a fruit shop? I don't know. If you went to a million shops that sell fruit... Fruit, fruity people. If you went to a million <laughs> different fruity people and you asked for a banana, you would never find a banana like this. Do you know why? Why? Because, Jack, you had a free choice. You? And this is the only banana in the world that has Queen of Clubs. What the hell? Written on the other side. That's <clears throat> banana. That's Queen of Clubs. That's your free choice. And I predicted everything. Well? Wow. And then you get a souvenir. Thank you so much for helping me. God, you get a queen of clubs banana. I know how much you like bananas. I do like bananas. So there, there's the performance. You know, I, I, I thought that went really well. What do you reckon? I think it went really well, yeah. I think it went he really well. enjoy it. Yeah, he really liked it. I think he was going to like the banana as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this this look, ultimately, I think we nailed it. We had a couple of different attempts on the way, but I think we got a banana. I, I, I think we definitely did it. We got a prediction out of a banana and a pack of cards. I think the, th the take-homes for this is when you are creating magic, Sometimes you have to think outside of the box. And what I mean by that is just because it says deck of cards doesn't mean it could be a normal deck of cards. It could be, in this case, a Svengali deck. You could use a rough and smooth deck. It could be a mirage deck. It could be a blank deck. You know, we never even thought about what we could do if we used like a mental photography deck. How would that work with a banana and fruits? You know, could you have a pack of cards that's blank on both sides, but it's got fruit on both sides. And then what happens is they pick a card. And, you know, there's lots of different options, but don't, don't limit yourself with just banana and a pack of cards. Think about what other tools you have in your arsenal. Think about what other props that you can bring in to help you make this a successful conclusion. And never stop creating, never stop thinking. You know, I mean, we're stopping right now, as this video will be forever. But, you know, we kind of went through three different uh, versions on the way to this final piece. But I know if I sat down here for another hour, it would probably go into a completely different direction. If we said, okay, let's put the deck of cards away, let's put the Svengali deck away, what else can we do with a banana and a normal pack of cards? with a prediction, I know we could go in a different direction again because there are so many different ways you could go. You know, you might, for example, think think about, you know, think about this. Think about um, doing, like we mentioned jokingly, an any card at any number. Imagine, uh, imagine having an any card at any number, but it's an any card and any fruit at any number. And imagine that you've got a deck of cards with 52 cards, but on the face of every card, you've written a different fruit. And you openly show that every single card has got a different fruit on it, right? And then you have somebody pick a card and you have somebody pick a fruit. 
You have somebody name a card, you have somebody name a fruit, you have somebody name a number, and when you deal down, it's the card at the number, and it's the only one that's got that fruit written on it. Now, I've got no idea how that would work, but <laughs> I, no idea, and I'm not going to think about it right now. But the point is, you know, what other things have you got? What plots have you got in magic that you could use to make something really unique? Um, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you still enjoying this series? Do you want to see more of them? Let me know down below. Uh, and also, don't forget, if you want to join the Netrix, which is my online streaming community, uh, you know, thousands of tricks up there. Um, all the tricks that are on the Netrix are not created in 15 minutes. You know, we spend a long time <laughs> thinking about that stuff. But if you want to go to the Netrix, uh, please do so. Go to www.thenetrix.com. I'll be back again next Thursday with another one of these. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Craig. Michael's behind the camera. This is Magic TV. Mm -hmm.